Yeah, you're just pushing muck. Hold up. All right, we got that muck to push. You are gonna have to get those tires down. Right. Yep. So just go for it. You just won't. You're, we're gonna we're gonna get buried, but uh. But that's all right. That's part of the adventure, right, puppy? All right, hold on right there. So now I'm gonna actually shake those tires down. I'm gonna have you stay right there. What do you think, dog? You like me to leave the trailer in or pull it out? I would like to take the trailer out because remember the last time we left it in a few times and we got to the pond and we didn't have the wheels on it. Yeah, the hubs don't like just being buried. So we're kind of buried, but good news, we got the boat pushed off with some uh, creative engineering. Now we're, uh, oh, didn't fall in, that's good. All right, so now we're gonna try to see if he can pull out. If not, we can just hook up the winch because the hubs, if you leave the trailer tires in the water, the hubs go out and that's not fun when you're in the middle of nowhere. Look at that muck. You're good. All right, awesome. You good with uh, telling us a little bit about the history of the pond? Yeah, yep, it was my grandfather's pond. I think it was built originally about 1974-ish. Um, it's I grew up with it, spent a lot of time out here fishing and playing in the water and trying to figure out how to bring it back to health. It's degraded over the past several years and just trying to find out what we can do to make it better habitat, better ecosystem for, for us to be able to utilize for fishing, for swimming, kayaking, whatever we want to do with it. Awesome. No, it's a beautiful property, beautiful pond. Uh, basically what we'll do is we'll get the boat in the water, we'll check your depths, we'll check your sediment, we'll check your fish population, your habitat, and we'll look a little bit closer at that filamentous algae. You say in the summertime it gets yeah, quite it gets excessive. Yeah, six to ten feet out and when you're taking kids out fishing you spend more time trying to get the hooks cleaned off and everything so it's just kind of gone downhill over the last few years and just trying to look for ideas to bring it back to life and health awesome you got it and uh, how big how big do you guys call it this is a five acre, uh, five -acre by, iowa by farm the ground uh, i'm not sure exactly but that's what if you map it off it comes out to about five acres like you're doing land Perfect. No, it would be just the exact same, just doing it online. Yeah, it was kind of my grandfather's pride and joy, and we'd like to continue that heritage. All right, well, let's get started. All right. Thanks. So there's some concerns with just the age of this pond and how much it has filled in on both of these uh, coves where the, where the water comes in off these fields. So we'll actually be checking the depths and then the muck content um, of how much silt is there till we get to the hard ground. So we'll be doing that here shortly, but for now, we're going to uh, be keeping our eye on the depth finder. It is fairly shallow. The motor, kicking up mud in the motor will definitely tell the story as well. But for now, we're going to see what's looking like with these fish. That's the fun part. All right. Any day that starts up is always a good day. And good, good. Boom. Boom. Coming at you live. Throwing juice in the water now. They think uh, that otters came in and got a bunch of fish. And uh, we'll just see if it's otters or a fish kill or both. See what's happening with this fish population. Any brush piles in the pond? I am not aware of what's in the bottom. I would assume, but not sure. Okay. Kicking up mud as we go it means, as much as I'd like to put that up in there, it means I'm limited to about right here. Here's a nice bass. It's starting to pop a fish at a pretty good pace now. Kevin is definitely out working west. Probably a three to one rate. Four to one. Four to one. The question is, how long do they get stunned for? Well, we can see that these guys are still stunned, so they might be stunned for a good solid minute. The colder the water is, the longer they get stunned for, actually. Um, 
And so as the water temps cool down this fall, it will uh, actually make it easier to collect fish. The warmer the water is, the more they uh, just bounce right back and get away. So we just went through a little flurry, and we definitely saw Kevin out due west at a four to one pace of northern the west. So now, as we come up to the next flurry of fish, we'll let you guys decide, can Kevin get, or can Wes get back on his game, or is he just going to be sluggish for the whole entire shocking survey? That's like to get one at a time. Yeah. Kev, how many do you got? All right, so we're at a six to one pace still. Or six to one pace as opposed to four to one. I think Kevin is still maintaining that four, five, six to one pace. Normally, Wes is the MVP, but not today. Well, I can tell you one thing this looks like a fish fry city to me. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And to be perfectly honest, the fish are holding a little tighter to the uh, weed line currently, and uh, which definitely gives Kevin the advantage, which he is older, definitely needs that handicap, definitely needs that advantage, but maybe we'll use that part of the footage, maybe we won't, maybe we'll make it look like Kevin is just uh, that much better. Ooh, how far does this span? That's a great question. Literally, just like you can see, it's a couple feet on each side of those uh, booms those anodes and then in between them back to the boat okay. and we'll go down about six to eight feet so the ones that take a little longer to get up are coming from a little bit deeper down so we can turn around a lot of times there's like a trail of fish that pop up later but I mean we're catching them at such a fast pace it's not like uh, we need to go back and get the stragglers unless we look back and see something real big and cool which is always fun you can just kind of see them moving ahead of us you can kind of see the, the, the arc where they're kind of getting tickled. Wes calls that a perif periphery, peripheral. Uh, but those are big words uh, for me. The bass look really fat. They, they do look like they're growing at a good pace. Back about 10, 15 years ago, we used to be We don't anymore. I mean, a good one. You want to know why that is? Yeah. Because the catfish don't actually reproduce well in ponds. Okay. And so not enough to sustain their population. So unless you've stocked catfish, you know, in the last 15 years or so, that would explain they why they're, they're just naturally on their way out. Now, there still may be, a, a, you know, most catfish are going to live about 15 years in a farm pond. Okay. Uh, some will only live 10. Some will live 20, and some will even live 30. Wow. Um, but on average, it's about a 10 to 15 year fish. So that's why we recommend restocking them as you take them out or as they naturally die off. So every few years, just stock a handful of catfish. And I actually think you were correct that this is more of an otter situation uh, than it was an actual fish kill. Um, because we're not inundated with just tons and tons and tons of big-eyed little tiny fish. Yeah. You've still got a pretty good natural balance. Oh. But it's definitely, the bass have such a high relative weight. They're, they're, they're more younger fish. They're not like old fish. I think you did lose a, a, a portion of those. See, it started fish. with... Uh... You were seeing uh, grass, bites. Yeah, the grass like, carp first, and then they went to the bigger bass. And uh, and so uh, you saw the two otters, you know, set up shop and basically biting, you know, like you yeah, saw the bite Yeah, they just take marks. the tail off of them, basically. Yeah. Like, more or less, they were just messing with them. Oh, no, they kill They kill for fun. Yeah, they don't even like. need to eat it. They just kill it for fun. Yeah, the, the bald eagles would come in and clean up the mess. Awesome. Well, we're going to keep uh, plucking away and... Uh, Check back in here in a little bit. So I take it to some fish. Yeah, so snapping turtles have been a concern of mine over the years because we have several come in and actually one last summer 
had some friends kayaking out here and it was fairly aggressive, like following them around. <laughs> so I was curious what your thoughts are for managing snapping turtles. So snapping turtles will come and go. Um, if they like where they're at, they'll set up shop until they don't like it any longer okay. or until you persuade them to leave. Okay. Um, they really don't harm people. I mean, I, they're not going to harm you unless you catch them and you've got them right, right there. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, they're going to typically stay away. Um, so they don't bother me. They help clean up dead, sick, yeah. dying fish. Fish are get, get sick and die all the time. Yep. They, they get them. Cycles. Yeah. It's a natural thing. And, uh, they really don't bother me, but they do bother people that are swimming. It's yeah. kind of like a shark, you know, it's like yeah, people swimming. are always just a little leery, leery when there's sharks around or uh, in here snapping turtles. Yeah. So they have a worse reputation than what they actually are. Okay. Um, so if you can educate the swimmers that they're not a big deal or you can just simply remove them, trap them uh, and uh, take them out. Okay. Thank you. But nothing to worry about on my end. whole tank load full of fish so let's go through them at first glance everything looks great the fish look very healthy they don't look full of parasites yellow grubs black spot um, overall very clean good looking healthy fish the one thing i can see right off the bat is you do have a surplus of eight to nine and a half inch crappies i'd recommend taking them out right now while you get a chance and kind of spending the rest of the time going through them and looking for them but there's a quick snapshot bass have very high relative weights that means they're actively growing um so that's that's great to see um the crappies though that's where we've got a bunch of these you can see they got a little bit bigger eyes they're not they're not actively growing so that's why i'd recommend thinning those back just a little bit it's a good problem I mean, you're gonna have a lot of fun you'll have a lot of fish fries coming up them. yeah oh yeah and then wes you want to show us the difference between a male and female bluegill and that's one thing that um can help you in uh, knowing which fish to, to eat in this scenario now this is not in every scenario or even very many but for your particular scenario this iowa farm pond puts out a bunch of bluegills you're gonna have a lot of them to eat but i would recommend eating that one and not really so the eating greenish greenish yep so thunderfish yep yep so you look at a lot of yellows in the belly yep. and everything like that a lot smaller ear tab than you yep. can see on this one here so this is a male this is a female yeah, overall, just a lot more blues and purples yep. and, and, and darker colors. This one's a little bit lighter, more yellows and whites. And, so uh, eat the oranges. females, leave the males back. You got it. So, and a lot of people say, well, why would you do that for this scenario? Well, you're not going to have any shortage of females. It, it's not like your family is going mm -hmm. to eat, uh, them <laughs> eat them all. And you don't need very many females. That they're going to make the same amount of babies. So yep. the reason why we will keep putting the males back is because we we want the alpha male bluegill effect where we want the the it's another big old fat a high relatively fast yep that is actively growing um, which is great so then uh, back to those back to those bluegills is you want the male bluegills you want the young male bluegills to have to become bigger than the existing male bluegills yep. And so when that happens, they're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you take out all the big males, then they'll the other ones will just become sexually mature real quick. No, they won't even really grow much after yeah. that. You've got a lot of great looking male bluegills. Let's keep it that way. Okay. And uh, let's do a little test on uh, bluegills. See if you can figure out male to female. If I can grab them. So that's a female, that's a male. Perfect. That's male. You got it. Female. All right. So for the most part, when you're eating fish, you're going to eat the females, you're going to release the males. Yeah. And uh, you'll have fun with your kids just kind of showing them. You can even show them on this video. Yeah. Show them the difference between the male and female. And you do not have a surplus of bass. Most Iowa farm ponds have a surplus of bass yeah, to harvest. It seems like a smaller you, fish. Yeah, you obviously don't. Um, so for the next couple years, you're not going to take out any bass. You are going to take out all of those crappies that you can get yep. and female bluegills as, as desired. So then we're going to spend the rest of the time just looking for more crappies, basically. Cool. It's a great looking, uh, great looking batch. 
just really good looking bluegills. So we took out all oh, like the Fourth of July weekend. We took out about eighteen crappies that we caught, and I never well, put them fun. back in. So yeah, I did the right thing. You absolutely did the right thing. That's pretty good. So then with the catfish, you could literally stock a hundred of them per acre in this pond right here. So mm -hmm. you could go up to 500 because uh, you mentioned how much you and your kids like to do that. Yeah. So that would build a nice population. The whole key to that, though, is not to just uh, put in 500, let it ride 10, 15 years and then start back again. Just stair step it in. Perfect. Yep. Just as you as you eat 50 of them, you know, every other year, put in another 50, you know, like and it's. It's a way to keep young, dumb, aggressive catfish, build that nice population, and they literally are the cheapest fish to buy. So it's it's the cheapest uh, form of protein you can get for your family, Good. Uh, which is kind of cool, and you guys will have a lot of fun with that. Good. Your dog is crazy, by the yeah. way. Yeah, she's a nut. <laughs> I like it. That's my style right there. I've been watching her, like, jump in after the frogs and the fish. And Could you imagine if she was actually, like, bigger? and had all that same spunk. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you gonna swim? Hey, Jackie. Come on. So oh, yep, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. She's like, eh, I'm good. She's been running around like crazy. Do you think she ever gets tired? I have not seen her get tired. Okay. We'll go on a side-by-side -side ride and I got check the cows and shit on the whole way there and the whole way back. <laughs> Wish I could do that. No, I would. I never did like running. <laughs> Kevin never liked running either. Wes looks like he's ran a little bit. I don't run much. <laughs> well, as we can see, has been the case the whole day. Kevin has outpaced Wes at a solid four and a half to one ratio. Uh, we've got just a few minutes left for Wes to narrow that gap, but. Based on his performance, I'm not sure it's going to happen. I just don't think he has enough in the tank to keep up. He's uh, superior there. Superior in age, I should say. By many, many, many years. This is that trail we were talking about earlier. Trail of deers all behind us. Let's go back and get those crappies that floated up. All right, Wes is putting rocks under the trailer tires to help get us up the lip. I'm gonna come in hot to get up onto that trailer as fast, best as I can. But that's a wrap from the Iowa Farm Pond, Fish Fry City. Oh boy. Getting that baby winched up just a couple more. Maybe he was just saving his energy uh, for now. I needed to. We were able to keep the tires up top, get her sled on. That should help a lot. All right, Kev. We got our rocks to help us ramp up. Let's check it out. Yeah, go ahead. This is always the adventure right here. Uh, not, nothing too crazy. 40, 50 miles an hour is probably fine. It's a good pace. Oh, yeah. We didn't even need to winch to the tree. What a good day. Absolutely. Hey, can you say that again? I missed it. I said it's all in the driving. All right. Wait, I didn't catch it. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, he's got some snacks. <laughs> Looks like crazy dog's coming home with us. Is it a he or a she? She, I think. He just jumped right in there. All right, well, I like your personality. Come out here, I'll feed your grasshopper. <laughs> he was eating, pounding them. Oh, he's got food right there. <laughs> 